Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And I'm here in the Rocky Knob Recreation Area, just off mile 167 of the Blue Ridge Parkway. I'm actually down in the bottom of this gorge. And there's beautiful wildflowers all through here. I'm on the Rock Castle Gorge Trail. It's a 10.8 mile loop over varied terrain. At its highest point, it takes you to over 3,500 feet over the top of Rocky Knob. And then you drop down into this gorge and move along some of the most beautiful trout waters you've ever seen. But today I'm here to show you red trillium. It's a most beautiful wildflower in the springtime. It's a fantastic thing to see. And remember these spring ephemerals. You can only see them right now. They don't last long. And if you miss it flowering this year, you have to wait a whole nother year to see it again. The cool thing about red trillium is it has about six or seven, maybe more different names. And I'm gonna tell you each of the names because each of the names tells you something about the natural history or biology of this plant. So stay tuned for red trillium. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. I decided to plant myself down here, no pun intended, with this uh, red trillium specimen here. And I made sure that I'm not sitting down, I'm, there's a rock underneath me, I'm not sitting down on any other woodland plants in case you're concerned. The scientific name of this trillium is Trillium erectum. And the word trillium, of course, refers to in threes and refers to the fact that all these parts of the plant are always within threes. And the last name, erectum, has to do with the fact that there's this upright stem that comes off this leaf part holding up the flower. This plant has some crazy biology because these parts that we call leaves, these are actually bracts. Morphologically, anatomically, embryologically, the origins of these things that look like leaves are actually bracts of a flower. What looks like a stem is actually a part of the rhizome. So while these leaves function like leaves, they're actually bracts or parts of the flower, and they do photosynthesis, technically they're not leaves, they're actually bracts. So there's really interesting biology in the development of this particular plant that grows from rhizomes, these root-like structures below the soil. These plants are found in deep, rich woodlands, preferring moist soils. You should, of course, never pick these plants. This one here could be 20 or 25 years old, and they only produce one flower each year in this small window of time. This plant has so many different common names. It's really fascinating looking at them. And talking about each name tells us a little bit about the biology and the natural history of this plant. One of the names is birthroot, which was kind of hybridized to bethroot, which is another name. And birthroot refers to the fact that the indigenous peoples of North America used a concoction from this root that was used as a stimulant for labor contractions. So hence the name birthroot, which was then hybridized as well to bethroot. Another crazy name for this plant is stinking benjamin. Now, where does that name come from? If you smell this flower, you'll find a very strange smell. It's not sweet at all, or it might be a more kind of a sweetish, decaying flesh kind of smell. This flower has no nectar, and it's pollinated by flies and carrion beetles. The carrion beetles, the carrion flies, are attracted to this flower by the red, dark-looking flesh of the flower and this stinking smell. So that gives us another name of the plant that's called wet dog trillium. Because some people say that when they smell the flower, it smells like a wet dog. Another name for this plant is called toad shade because the size of the plant is just about big enough for a toad to get underneath. It's not too, too high off the ground and it could provide some shade for a toad. Another name for red trillium is wake robin or woke robin. 
and it refers to robins, the birds that are the early bird. They're one of the first spring bird migrants to arrive. Just like red trillium is one of the first wildflowers to pop up. And it has a red color. So the association was made between red trillium and robin redbreast, and so they call it wake robin or woke robin. Medicinally, the Native Americans used extracts from this root as an expectorant or as an astringent or as a blood coagulant. So if you put this extract on a cut, it will cause the capillaries of the blood vessels to close and help stem the bleeding. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. Remember, if you like what I do here and what I share and how I teach, please subscribe to my channel and leave me a like. And leave me a comment as well or a question or share your experiences. I love reading my comments. I read all of them and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door here in the Appalachian Mountains near the Blue Ridge Parkway in far southwest Virginia.